Welcome back here to Fox and Friends on this Saturday morning. Well, it's a change of command. Goodbye, McChrystal. Hello, Petraeus. But one problem still remains, tension between civilians in the Obama administration and the military's top brass. Congressman Peter King joins us now, and he says he has a clear-cut solution to this problem. Uh, Congressman, nice to see you this morning. Good to see you. All right, there is this sort of conflict right now. We get rid of McChrystal, but there's still the civilian conflict there between uh, Vice President Biden, some other members of his staff. Uh, what's your solution? What do they need to do? Well, my solution is, first of all, uh, Get a military solution. And they, you know, they agreed on it last year and let that be carried out. You can't have people like the vice president and ambassadors and other people in the administration undercutting the military commanders. What I mean by that is I was in Iraq several weeks ago. And you know, General McChrystal is trying to convince the Afghans, the Pakistanis, the local tribal leaders that we're going to stay till the job is done. Then you have people like Vice President Biden saying, no, we're pulling out large numbers of troops next summer. Then you have Secretary Gates saying, we're not going to pull out large numbers. Then you have other people in the administration saying we are. This mixed message is scaring off potential allies. Uh, because of this, you have the leaders in Afghanistan and Pakistan covering their bets, playing both sides, and you can't win that way. We have no hope of winning unless we're speaking with one message and allow the military commander to do his job. Do you think this is an affirmation of the Bush policy for Iraq, which was the surge worked in Iraq? General Petraeus at the head of the surge in Iraq, but the Obama administration has never publicly said the surge has worked. Now they're putting the guy who was in charge of the surge in Afghanistan. Is, is, is this confirmation of that policy? Well, it certainly is a political vindication of uh, President Bush, but you know, this goes beyond that. And uh, the fact is that, uh, as I see, you know, no two situations are the same, Iraq or Afghanistan. Having said that, I think the principles of Iraq can apply in Afghanistan. Once the surge started in January, February of 07, everybody in the Bush administration, military, civilian, everyone was giving the exact same message. The leaders in Iraq, no, local tribal leaders, only signed up for the surge because they trusted President Bush, that he would not pull out, would not leave them to al-Qaeda. Well, you know, what? part of the main problem, though, in Afghanistan is that seven 70, 80 percent of the problem comes from Pakistan. Mm -hmm. It's not even in the country right. of Afghanistan. So if you're going to put more troops in Afghanistan, is that really missing the mark? No, because we have to get Pakistan to do more. And Pakistan is not going to do more if they feel we're going to pull out. If Pakistan doing all that it can uh, in Pakistan and along the border. We're doing all that we can. I believe we can uh, achieve stability there. But so long as Pakistan thinks we're going to be pulling out, which we did also in the late 80s, early 90s, then you leave Pakistan there. They can be outflanked by India. They would have to deal with Taliban in Afghanistan. So right now you have elements in Pakistan working with the Tal in certain elements of the, the Taliban in Afghanistan yeah. to prepare themselves for the day when we pull out. What a mess. What a mess. I saw your press release as soon as uh, General Petraeus was put yeah. in charge. You came out right in support of uh, General Petraeus. You think it's a brilliant stroke by the president? Is he going to get the job done? Yeah, General Petraeus has to get the job done. If anyone in the world can get it done, it's General Petraeus. I have a tremendous regard for General McChrystal. What happened was really unfortunate. But General Petraeus, I think, is, uh, again, he's our Pat and our MacArthur, our Eisenhower. He is a phenomenal military leader, and he knows how to get it done. He has great diplomatic ability also. Mm. All right, Congressman Peter King, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank on you. This Saturday morning. Well, Julia, the unpredictable nature of world events on full view at the White House the last week or so. President Obama dealing with so many moving parts all at the same time. The economy, the oil disaster in the Gulf that Rick was just talking about. More recently, the firing of General Stanley McChrystal from his command in Afghanistan. The Obama administration is trying to juggle all of these things as it looks towards the midterm elections only about five months away. So how has the president handled these multiple crises? Let's bring in our political pal, Peter King, of course, the Republican congressman from New York, Frank Pallone, Jr., Democratic congressman from New Jersey. Gentlemen, good to see you both. Thanks for coming in. And we in the media, Congressman Pallone, we tend to focus in on every single headline and we look for some kind of a bigger cosmic meaning here. But there have really been a lot of big headlines over the last week to 10 days or so. How's the president doing? Well, I think the president is doing very well. I mean, you think of his uh, three major initiatives, which is Wall Street reform, which we're going to vote on this week. We finally have a conference report. He passed the health care reform back in uh, April. It was signed. And, of course, the, uh, the Recovery Act, which created 2.5 uh, million jobs. Uh, I, I think that his policies are leading us towards a recovery, and they're also trying to prevent the recession, a recession from happening again with the Wall Street reforms that he'll probably sign within the next few weeks. So uh, in terms of his agenda that he committed to, he's doing very well. Congressman King, quite a lot of drama lately for no drama Obama. I'm guessing your critique won't be as, I guess, favorable? Well, not as favorable as Frank's, but I have to say that as far as the whole uh, issue with General McChrystal, 
While I have a great regard for General McChrystal, I think the president handled the right way in the way he did remove General McChrystal, and he was able to get General Petraeus to uh, come in as the uh, substitute, as a replacement. And General Petraeus, of course, is the author of Counterinsurgency. So to that extent, I thought the president handled that very well. What he has to do now, though, is to get his entire administration in line. He can't continue to have people like the vice president, the ambassador, uh, Eikenberry in Afghanistan, and other members of the administration giving a different message. You have President Biden on one side, Secretary Gates on the other, and that really is what undermined General McChrystal in Afghanistan. So he has to get all the civilians in his administration under control. As far as the other issues, I would probably vote against the financial regulation bill, mm -hmm. but as a, as a practical matter, it is an achievement for the president, even though I don't think it's going to help him that much in the November elections. And the other one, of course, is the, uh, you know, the Gulf oil situation, uh, which still is uh, uh, spilling out. And... The president, I don't think he, he has shown enough leadership on that. And listen, 99% of this would have been the same no matter what the president had done. But I think the fact that he got a late start in asserting himself has, has hurt his overall image on that. But again, it's a long way from now to November. Congressman Pallone, Rahm Emanuel uh, told Politico, uh, quote, we have righted the ship on the crises we inherited and laid a new foundation for long-term economic competitiveness. But as someone who is yourself up for re-election, in five months' time, and you've got a lot of people in your state who are looking for work, you've got to be wondering, where are those jobs, right? Well, I think the, the president uh, and the Congress inherited, uh, essentially, uh, this recession. And if you look at what the president has been doing and the legislation we've been passing, again, the Wall Street reform is designed to prevent the financial uh, chaos that occurred uh, when the president first took office and have a a better way to sort of rein in Wall Street and the banks. The uh, the Recovery Act uh, created, as I said, 2.5 million jobs, had a major tax cut for the middle class, uh, did a lot in terms of infrastructure. And now in terms of protecting people and guaranteeing them health care, we have the health care reform. Right. So I think we're in good shape. I mean, uh, look, uh, obviously you have a recession, and I'm not going to suggest that things are good. But in terms of laying a foundation for the future, we've done a lot to make a difference in the future. Gentlemen, before we run out of time, I want to ask you both uh, just to give you a moment, if you, if you want to say anything about uh, the news of Senator Robert Byrd, your congressional colleague. Uh, as we've been reporting, he is seriously ill, according to his staff. The longest-serving senator in the U.S. Senate, Congressman King, and even from the other side of the aisle, I'm sure you've got to admit, quite a career here. No, he certainly put his whole life in, into the job as a congressman, as a senator. He was a majority leader at one time, and obviously uh, thoughts and prayers have to go out to him. If I could just say one thing, though, I don't know how long the de Democrats are going to continue to uh, blame George Bush for what they inherited. President Bush also inherited a recession and had 9-11. He never went back and blamed it on others. So I think let's go forward. Let's try to work together. I think well, it makes a lot better than just trying to blame everything. They'll probably George keep doing it, Congressman King, until there's a Republican in the White House who will be blaming President Obama uh, for what <laughs> he or she has inherited. Uh, Congressman Pallone, well, well, I'll give you last word, Congressman Pallone. On, Clinton, on Senator, no. I'm sorry, to, I'm sorry, Congressman King. I always love hearing what you have to say, <laughs> okay. Congressman Pallone. Uh, a final thought from you on Senator Byrd. I was very uh, upset to hear uh, that he's in ser he's seriously ill. He has an incredible career and is you know impressive in all the legislation he's passed. I hope that he uh, gets better. It doesn't sound it sounds like there's still a uh, you know possibility he could get well, and I certainly hope so. Frank Pallone, Peter King, Congressman, both gentlemen, thanks very much. Thank you.